Are you guys good? Yeah. All right. You guys enjoying the day thus far? It's a good day, right? So, um, $460,000 of debt. I was 26 years old, and I had $460,000 of debt. So uh, I remember it was summertime in South Florida, and it was hot, and I demanded my husband pull the car over because I couldn't take it anymore. The credit card companies had been calling my phone, man, what felt like dozens of times, and it wasn't even noon. And so I'd absolutely had it. These credit card companies, man, our debt, it just, it was suffocating us. It felt like, like a wild animal just chasing after us, and, and we couldn't get away fast enough. And that wild animal was our debt. And it wanted everything, man. It, it wanted to destroy our marriage. It wanted to take our hope. It wanted our future. It wanted everything. And it wasn't supposed to be like that. And so there we sat, pulled over in the back, oddly enough, of a bank, parking lot, just sitting there, man, trying to figure out, how do we get here? How the heck did we get here? I remember it was so hot, the, our old Jeep Liberty, it was working so hard to just like barely blow that like lukewarm air on your face, right? And there we sat, I remember distinctly thinking, man, I'm repeating some of the same behaviors I vowed I would never recreate. And there I was doing it. It made me think about this scripture that I love. It says, your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour. And in that moment, can I just tell y'all, we were Sunday dinner. I mean, just apple in the mouth, ready to go. And it wasn't supposed to be like that. We're, we're just a couple just like anybody else, right? You're looking for your happily ever after. And somewhere along the way, we found ourselves in $460,000 of debt. That is suspiciously close to half a million dollars in debt. Now, I don't know where y'all come from, but where I come from, half a million dollars is a bag, okay? That's, that's some money right there. That's what the kids are saying these days, it's a bag. Um, <laughs> and just for the record, because I know some of y'all in here are like, well, what was it? You paid off your mortgage? No, ma'am. I'm talking about consumer debt. Yeah, just judge it. Judge me. <laughs> 280000 of it was student loans. 20000 credit cards. All right, and then, of course, we had two cars that we couldn't afford. And let me tell you something about these student loans. Back then, they were not talking about writing forgiveness checks, okay? We were in this by ourselves. This was not a dream. This was a nightmare. And I found a stat that said that nightmare of debt, maybe not 460, but six figures of debt, is becoming normal. The average millennial comes out with $117,000 of consumer debt. That's messed up. That's not a dream, it's a nightmare. And if that's normal, six figures of debt, if that's normal, can I just go ahead and say, normal sucks. Okay, it sucks. And we're in church, so we can say that. We're not in church, so we can say that. <laughs> and my son is not here, so he won't correct me either. <laughs> normal is being in so much debt that you can't function. And I don't have to tell you guys this. I remember we had so much debt, we couldn't afford to pay all the bills for the month. We didn't have enough money, too many bills. And so we would sit down and decide which bills that we could pay and which bills had to talk to the hand. You know what I'm saying? I remember having so much debt, not being afford, be able to afford to buy groceries. Now, I'm not suggesting you do this, but what I would do is on a Friday after 5 p.m., I'd go to the grocery store and I'd write a check knowing we did not have the money. And I thought, okay, if I write this check, they can't, they can't cash it. They can't cash it on a, they can't clear it on a Saturday or a Sunday. And that gives us two days, just two days. If we can come up with $60, we can keep that check from bouncing and we'll have groceries. And sometimes it worked, 
and sometimes it didn't. Man, I remember having so much debt, AT&T, man, they were constantly turning our phones off. And when they weren't off, they were ringing. My phone was constantly lighting up with 1-800-PAY-ME, all right? And I learned that I would keep the phone face down if I was around other folks because I didn't want them to see my phone lighting up with 1-800-PAY-ME. Now, too many of you guys in this room are relating to what I'm saying. Some of you are judging me. Some of you are like, Jade, it's not that bad for me, and it never was. You, you're different. And you might be right, but some of you guys in here are like, man, I feel it. I know what you're talking about, Jade, because you know right now, debt, man, it's, it's destroying your daily life. It's taking away your options. It's eroding your future. And I don't have to tell you guys that debt, man, it turns blessings into burdens. I don't have to tell you that, that debt creates rifts and, and barriers in your most meaningful relationships. That's what makes you snap off when your daughter asks for, for, for lunch money, right? It's that stress of debt. We know that debt keeps us in jobs that we hate, keeps us in relationships. It's not good for us. Debt turns otherwise free people into slaves. I think about this scripture right here. It says, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come, talking about Christ, that they might have life and life to the full. There's another version I like that says, it's the thief's purpose to steal, kill, and destroy. But it is my purpose for them to have a rich and satisfying life. Now here's the thing. If you look at this version, it says the word may right there. That they may have life. There's some translations that uses the word might. And that's really interesting to me because I don't know about you, but the word might and may, it doesn't mean will, right? It's just, the word might, is, it's just a possible, it's an expression of possibility. It means that, yeah, this is the plan and this is the purpose, but it might not happen. It might happen, it might not. Ultimately, it's up to us. We've got to go after it, right? We've got to pursue this like it's the purpose and the plan. And ultimately, it's up to us. We have to believe this. Dave Ramsey would say it like this. you got to deliver yourself like a gazelle from the hand of the hunter, which means this. If debt is chasing after you as the thief and it's trying to steal, kill, and destroy, you've got to run and run for your life. Because I learned this. I will never build wealth if I don't first reclaim my freedom from debt. Now here's the deal. It took my husband Sam and I, Sam is over there somewhere. It took my husband Sam and I, hey Sam, what's going on? You look good, you look good. <laughs> it took my husband Sam and I all of seven and a half years to pay off every cent of $460,000 of debt. And we did that using the principles that's outlined in Financial Peace University. You're gonna hear about that all the live long day, okay? And, and let me tell you this, Financial Peace University's those principles were the single most important additions that we ever added to our life. And the same is true for you. If you don't know what I'm talking about, do not leave the room today. Do not leave here without getting plugged in to Financial Peace University. And I don't have time to really just go into all that right now, but I can tell you this. There were three things that we pulled away from that that we started doing immediately, and you can too. And those three things are this. Like literally today, you can do thing one, two, and get started on three. Everybody say cool. 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 All right, that's what we're going to do. All right. Thing one, man, you got to stop borrowing money. You got to stop. You cannot solve a problem while simultaneously creating it, okay? So you got to draw a line in the sand, say, I'm not borrowing money anymore. Galatians 5.1 said this, it's for freedom that Christ sets you free. Therefore, stand firm and do not let yourselves be burdened. Again, by the same yoke of slavery, one, one verse says the same yoke of bondage. And I like that one. It's kind of like, like you were in a straitjacket all this time, and you finally broke three of it, and you said, oh, a straitjacket. I'm going to put that back on. <laughs> Who does that? Draw a line in the sand today. Stop borrowing money. All right. Thing number two is this. Man, you got to live on a budget. All right. Turn to your neighbor and say, live on a budget. No, 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 no. No, don't, don't do that. 
Don't do that. That's awkward. That's awkward. But, but turn to your other neighbor and explain why they were your second choice. Like, was it their breath? I don't know, like their face? I don't know. What, what. Don't do that. Don't do that. But you got to live on a budget. Now, I know my dog, George Camel, he just put you guys on to why it's so important to live on a budget. So I'm not going to get into it. But let me just tell y'all, when I think of a budget, I like to make it kind of like bougie because I like that. It's like, it's like custom organization for your money. Okay? You like, it's like custom organization for my dollars and cents. I like that. And I like to think about the budget like this. It doesn't confine my money. It just defines it. The budget doesn't confine your money. Yeah, you can clap for that, boo. I like that. It defines your money. And we need that because the budget helps us find the margin to not only do things like get $1,000 saved, right, but to do this next step, which is this, my favorite. We got to get out of debt using the debt snowball method. Come on, make some noise for the debt snowball. Now, a lot of y'all have heard about this. We already know. We take our debts and we list them from smallest to largest. Stop right there, because the moment I started talking about paying off debt, I could kind of feel it. Maybe it was my guy in the corner over there, or maybe somebody back there. It was like, oh, debt? We got to pay off our debt? Whoo, Jade. Oh, man, just thinking about it makes me tired. You know what? Maybe when I feel motivated, I'll start. Mm, I know. Can I tell you guys something? Come on, just like, this is just us right here. We just don't lean in. Motivation is a myth. Write that down, because that was, that, was, <laughs> that was all right. It's true. You know, I used to think, oh, motivation, when I feel motivated, I'll start. But actually, it's the opposite, man. Motivation is actually a product of starting and having experienced a win. That's what it is. That's why uh, uh, schools like Harvard have published studies corroborating the fact that the debt snowball is, in fact, the best way to pay off debt because you start small, you experience those wins, and that win leads you to feel more belief, which leads you to feel more motivation, which leads you to continue on into completion. And so we've learned that money isn't mostly about math. It turns out that sometimes money is mostly about mindset. And so that's how this thing works. We list out those debts from smallest to largest, so we experience those wins, and that's what provides the motivation. All right, so this is what we're going to do. We got to go through the bills, all right? Everybody in their house has got, like, I don't know, like that stack of bills on the counter, right, that you never touch, or, like, now's the time to, like, pull open that junk drawer and, like, let all the moths fly out, right? And you, you, you got to pull out these envelopes, guys, and go through this. Like, don't, don't, don't keep this in a closet somewhere. Open up these bills and see how much they're worth. And when you open it up and you see the words outstanding in bright red letters, it doesn't mean that you're doing a good job, all right? <laughs> it, it, it means that you owe some folks some money and you got to give them their money. So we list the debt smallest to largest. There's a few exceptions to that. And of course, you know, if you're owing the IRS debt, Man, put those on the top of your list. You do not want to mess with these IRS folks. So you put that at the top of the list no matter what. And God forbid if you're struggling to stay in your house, maybe you're behind on some mortgage payments or some rent payments, we want to put those first because we want to keep you in your house. So we're listing out the debt. Now, lucky for you guys, uh, this is a one-time deal right here. Lucky for you, I happen to have my list of debts right up here. This is real. This is the real deal. Now, I don't know about you, but I see Capital One listed on there like 10 times. I didn't even know they could do that. And uh, CarMax is up there. Victoria's Secret, probably the one time Victoria's Secret did not help a marriage, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> it didn't help. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these and we're going to list them smallest to largest, all right? List them out. Now, we make payments on all of the debt. Keep the debt collectors off your butt. And then we take all the, any and all extra money, put it at the smallest debt, right? And then when it's paid off, take all that money, put it on the next debt. And when that's paid off, we take all that money, put it on the next smallest debt. And they take all that money, put it on the next debt. And before you know it, you got a nice little snowball rolling. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the more you accomplish, the more
more you believe is possible. That's that motivation that I'm talking about. Because we know this, you're never going to build wealth if you don't first reclaim your freedom from debt. Now here's the thing. With this debt snowball, the whole thing is speed, guys. I mean, we got to bust it. We got to go fast. I'm talking about when Sam and I were working our debt snowball, we did any and everything we could to make it go faster. What does that mean? It means you got to get a jobby job. You got to work, okay, and get extra jobs and extra side hustles. I mean, I remember doing music lessons. Sam was teaching piano lessons. I was doing voice lessons. I used to make cupcakes and sell them. My husband was training dogs. You name it, we did it. I remember specifically I used to, I got this job at a vinyl tent in lettering, like garage, I guess is what it was, and I would come in, and the first half of the day, I would install, like, tent on windows. And then the second half of the day, I would go to this big work table and cut these giant vinyl letters to install on the side of, like, work trucks. Okay, so if you've ever seen, like, a work truck going by that says, like, like Bubba's roofing and more, all right, I put Bubba in business, okay? I was the one who put those letters on, and, and I remember my knuckles were so ashy, just... <laughs> Some of y'all don't know about that, but I know about that. But here's the thing. We were able to do it in seven and a half years, and the good news is this. The average person, not talking about Sam and I, the average person gets out of debt in 18 to 24 months. It's like two years, guys. Now, I've never been one for being average, but this is one time you want to be average, okay? 18 to 20, 24 months is a good thing. It's just a drop in the bucket, right? It's a drop in the bucket. I don't look back and be like, man, it took so long. I just live my life in the moment. But I know there's people in the room right now, and you're right there in the thick of it. And you're like, Jade, man, I hear what you're saying, and I'm motivated. But the fact is, I got to wake up tomorrow and do this thing again. Like, I got to keep going, and it feels like we can't make it. Can I tell you this? Don't grow weary in well-doing. Man, let us not grow weary in well-doing, because in due season, in due time, we'll reap a harvest. If we don't give up, if you don't faint, man, it's it just in, in just two more years, right? Or, or in just a couple more months, some of you just in a few more weeks, you're ready to reap that harvest. But don't faint, man. Don't, don't give up. Don't tap out. But Jade, is it ever a time? I mean, ever a time just to take a little break. Here's what I would say. If you're like Sam and I, and you're part of that six-figure freedom club, y'all know what about that? Six Figure Freedom Club, let me tell you real quick. Six Figure Freedom Club is if you've paid off six figures of debt, maybe you're out here trying to uh, get six figures of net worth, maybe you're out here giving six figures of generosity. That's Six Figure Freedom Club. So maybe if you're part of Six Figure Freedom Club and it's taking, you got all this debt, man, and it's taking you a long time to pay it off. You're in this thing maybe three, four, heaven forbid, five, six, seven years like Sam and I. Yeah, you do need to take a break. You need to take a break. You need to set up those milestones and say, okay, when we get here, whatever here is, maybe we'll do a little something like, uh, there's a side hustle you hate, go ahead and quit that one. You know, take a break for a while, or maybe you go on a staycation. Do something, take a break. But don't set yourself back. You know, here's the way I like to think of it. You're like, uh, you're like, like a humpback whale just jumping out for a moment of glory, and then you're right back in. Keep swimming, keep swimming, keep swimming, keep swimming. That's how it goes. Y'all know what I'm talking about over there. That's how it goes. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't talk to the married folks for a minute. So can I, get, can I give a word for the married folks? Make some noise if you're married in the house. All right. Y'all sound like you like your spouse. That's good. That's good. I like that. Now, here's what I found out, which is weird. I found out that only 43% of married couples are sharing and combining their finances. Only 43%, which is weird because when you look at the benefits, this, the actual facts that we know about this, we know that married couples who, who combine their money, man, they build wealth four times faster than couples who don't. They're more likely to purchase a home together, which is probably why they're building that wealth so fast. It says that they're more likely to stay together through the long haul. And here's this. this I just like this little fact right here. It says they're happier. They're just happier. So isn't that interesting? Now, I'm going to tell you guys the, the, the truth. Can I tell you all the real truth? When I first met Sam Warshaw, I had no idea how much debt this dude had. 
because we didn't talk about things like that back then. And uh, when I found out, okay, just put a, put a picture up. Because I said, oh, Lord, thank you that he's good looking. I said, thank you, Jesus. Because the man had $230,000 of student loans. Woo! Oh, Lord. Oh, my God. Oh. But you want to know what, though? I just was like, it's ours. It's, it's not his. And this is not mine. It's ours. And some of y'all, only by the grace of God, I'm telling you. <laughs> but it's true. Some of you guys in here, you need to do what I like to call a vocab rehab. Because I can hear it now. You get home, and you're like, well, you're spending, and my paycheck, and your debt. No, 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 boo. We cannot talk like that. It's our money, and, and this is what we spend, and, and, and it's us. These are the words that you need to start using, a vocab rehab. Now, I'll tell you what. I remember the very first debt that Sam and I paid off, all right? It was like a, two credit cards combined, and it was like something like $300. And I remember feeling like, man, I'm the king of the world. And folks would ask me, Jade, you're doing this debt snowball. Like, what's it like? What's it feel like to pay off that first debt? Eh, this is the best way that I can explain it to you guys. Have you ever seen those indoor rock climbing walls? They're like inside, and they go pretty high up. I've always been afraid of them. And one day, I was like, you know what? I'm going to try this rock climbing wall thing. So I go over there. They give you the harness. I'm like stepping into the harness, getting it on, pulling it up. And I'm real nervous about it. I'm like, is this going to work? Can I do it? But I start climbing. And I'm climbing up, and before you know it, I'm like starting to feel good about it. I'm like, ooh, I'm doing good. And I'm climbing up. I yell back to Sam, who is far on the ground, and I'm like, Sam, look at this. I'm doing it. He's like, uh, yeah. His voice was like really close to me. <laughs> and uh, when I looked, it turned out I had not scaled the heights. <laughs> I had not scaled the heights I thought I scaled. But that's what it's like when you start this debt snowball, man. You pay off that first debt and you're like, where is the feelings? And you realize there's still a big mountain to go, but that's okay. The point is you started. And the point is that I started. And yes, you've got some ways to go, but there ain't nowhere to go but up now. We're in this thing now. And let me tell you, yeah, you can clap for that. That first debt, <sighs> it's just a taste, man. It's just a taste of what life is gonna be like without payments, without debt collectors. It's just a taste. I remember what it felt like to pay off that first debt. And I remember what it felt like to pay off that final debt. Standing in the center of what was then Financial Peace Plaza, getting to yell those most coveted words. Come on and watch this. Very well done. All right, it's Jade and Sam from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. $460,000 paid off in seven and a half years, making 30 to 264. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. Three, two, two one. one. We're debt free! Yeah! That's how you do it right there, man. Man, no more angst, only ease. You can't say the word ease without smiling, without exhaling. And some of y'all are in here, it's like, Jade, but, but you don't know what I'm going through. You don't, I know, I do know, and I can tell you, your moment to exhale, it's coming. It's coming, and instead of being crushed <laughs> under a pile of debt and, and, and stress and frustration and shame and worry and guilt, you are gonna be standing on top of it. The victor, your freedom reclaimed. No longer running from an animal of debt, but running towards something, a purpose, a vision, a legacy. As you live and you give like no one else, thank you. That's my time.